I'm a little nervous. Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. I am so very excited to have you here. I'm, look, if you know me, you know by now that I am not a huge spice gal. I don't love reading super heavy, intense spice books. I haven't quite fine-tuned exactly what I'm comfortable with and what I'm not comfortable with. I think as of right now, the way that I think about it is if it's at least tasteful and it's not just spice thrown in there to have spice, I don't necessarily have a huge problem with it but there are some books that I just think it's unnecessary and I don't care for it that much. Also, I've noticed that everybody writes differently, right? Not everybody's the same, obviously. So not all authors write spice the same. Some authors do it in a cringy way, in my opinion. Some of them do it where it's kind of minuscule, it's not too over sharing, it's just very bare bones. And some people really just get into it and just come up with their own words and terminologies and ideas for everything and just really get creative in that aspect. And that's not typically what I'm very fond of. So today I decided that I was going to step out of my comfort zone a little bit, a lot of it. I'm really just jumping out of my comfort zone right here. And I'm going to be reading dark romance books for this week. Now I'm sure there are gonna be some people hooting and hollering saying that these are not dark romance books, that these aren't like anything crazy, they're just normal like spice level books, stuff like that. To me these are dark romance, I don't care, that's just how I'm classifying them because they are definitely more on the heavy side I feel like. I also didn't want to do anything too outrageous, I wanted to keep it kind of simple and on the lower end of the spectrum, I didn't want to just full force jump in and read like an erotica novel. I just, I didn't want to do that. So I decided that I would keep it more tame, I think. So I decided for this video to start off with some Penelope Douglas. I have heard that these are very spicy. I've heard that they're just not very spicy from the Spice Lover gals. So I don't really know, but I feel like this is not a bad place to start in terms of a dark romance. But who knows? <laughs> I could be totally wrong. So I've got three books here for this week. I have Credence. I got this one a long time ago from Target. I saw somebody on TikTok talk about it. I thought the cover was cute and I was like, okay, like might as well just go ahead and try it out. And then after a while, I finally had somebody talk about what it was actually about. And I was like, ooh, I, I wasn't prepared for that. Like now I actually don't think that I'm gonna like this that much. So I guess we'll see. We'll see what I think. So I got this one. Then I got Punk 57. Again, Penelope Douglas. I have no idea what this one is about. Literally just looked up the author and just got two more books from her because I already had this one. So I figured I'd go ahead and just stick to the same author kind of thing for this video. Obviously went ahead and got this one. And then lastly, I got Birthday Girl. This one, I guess they like started manufacturing them differently. They or from a publisher, I guess, because this one's a nice floppy book and these two are very hard, thick books. So again, don't know anything about this one at all. Just picked some that came up whenever I searched for her name and we went from there. So this is the lineup that I've got right now. I think I'm going to start with Credence. Just this one's a little bit bigger. This one's like the bigger of the three books, I feel like. The longer of the three books, I guess I should say. Also, I don't think that this one's going to be a very comfortable book to hold, in my opinion. They do have all of these on Kindle Unlimited if you do want to check them out for yourselves. So I will be definitely reading them on Kindle a lot, especially at night, so that way I don't have to use my headlamp. <laughs> but I think that this is gonna be the one that we're gonna start off with. Why don't we read the back together? Should we do that? Let's see. Tiernan? Tiernan? De Haas? Look, this is gonna be an issue. <laughs> doesn't care about anything anymore. The only child of a film producer and his scarlet wife. She's grown up with wealth and privilege, but not love or guidance. Shipped off to a boarding school from an early age, it was still impossible to escape the loneliness and carve out a life of her own. The shadow of her parents' fame followed her everywhere, and when they suddenly passed away, she knows she couldn't be devastated. But has anything really changed? <laughs> She's always been alone, hasn't she? Jack Vanderberg, her father's stepbrother, and her only living relative assumes guardianship of her, who is still two months shy of being 18. Sent to live with him 
and his two sons, Noah and Caleb, in the mountains of Colorado. Tiernan soon learns that these men now have a say in what she chooses to care and not care about anymore. As the three of them take her under their wing, teach her to work, and survive in the remote woods far away from the rest of the world, she slowly finds her place among them and as part of them. And she also realizes that the lines blur and rules become easy to break when no one else is watching. One of them has her, the other one wants her. But he, <laughs> he's gonna keep her. <laughs> okay. Okay, wow. This is very interesting. I'm gonna be really honest right now. I am kind of scared that I'm going to enjoy this. Like, what if I do like it and, <laughs> you know, it just like is weird. Because people do like this, right? People do enjoy this. But like, what if I enjoy it? What if I like find the story really good and fascinating and just endearing or something like that? I don't know. I don't think, again, I'm, I, I'm not normally a spice gal. So I don't think that like that's going to be anything to worry about. I don't think I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, like this has totally changed my opinion. I'll still probably end up like skipping over it if it gets too like weird and uncomfortable. But the storyline could be really good. And that's my thing. I don't mind spice when the storyline's really good. If it's just like Spice is the storyline, not into it. But who knows? It could be an interesting read aside from all the other stuff that they've got going on. And I could be totally wrong. What if I get into this and it's like not spicy at all? I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. But again, these two are going to be on the back burner. I'm going to start with this one and I will let you know my thoughts, my opinions. I'm going to keep you updated. I'm a little nervous. Kind of scared. I'm not going to lie. But I'm going to just be honest, right? What's the worst that could happen? We are looking at how to pronounce this name as well as how to say more interesting and often confusing Irish names and some of the most mispronounced ones too. So make sure to stay tuned for this. How do you say it? Tiernan. Tiernan. Pretty straightforward once you know. Tiernan. And now you know. Now I know. Video. Now I know. Tiernan. All right. Again. Now let's get into it. I'm 20, no, I'm 200, I'm 212 pages into Credence so far. It's been a couple days. It's Wednesday now. Uh, I'm not blowing through this. I'm definitely not like going super slow, I guess. I didn't read hardly anything on Monday, really. I read a lot last night, but I mean, that's not terrible. A little under halfway. It's about 500 pages. It's like 470, I want to say. Um, it's it's something. <laughs> it really is something. I don't know how to feel about this at all. The storyline itself is not terrible. Maybe it is. Maybe the romance is part of the storyline, and I'm just gaslighting myself. Um, the romance is very odd. I don't know what's going on. It's like a three-way love triangle that we've got here. It's not like a, it's not even a triangle. It's like a love square. I, like, I, <laughs> I really don't understand. This girl, she's 17. She's not even 18, which we'll just pretend like, you know, maybe she's in one of those states where it's actually your legal adult age is 16 because there's some states like that. I'm not in a state like that, so to me it's 18, so to me she's not an adult yet, but 
to some other people, she would be an adult like 16. So I'm not even going to get into all that. But she's like into every single dude that she's living with. I feel like it. she's had like moments with all of them and it's just kind of very weird, very odd. I guess like technically they're like not her family. She's never met them before a day in her life. She doesn't actually know them. Her uncle is like her dad's stepbrother that they couldn't stand each other and so they've never gotten along. So I don't know. I'm not like justifying anything, obviously. I still think that it's very odd. I still think it's kind of uncomfortable, but that's just how that they're explaining it in the book. But she is really attracted to her step uncle. <laughs> her step cousin came in and like forced himself on her. And then her other step cousin is... I don't know, he's more, like, civil, I guess. They really haven't, like, done anything. But, like, he's interested in her. She's interested in him. Like, everybody's just interested in her. She's interested in all of them. And it's just kind of... Uh, it's not even kind of. It's just weird. I don't, like... I don't know. It's not as ridiculous as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be really intensely spicy so far. I don't think that it has been... And I'm not going to say that the spice has been tasteful because that's not what I'm trying to say. But it hasn't been super cringy, I guess. I think now I just compare everything to Buy a Thread by Lucy Score. I think that that was so cringy and I hated any type of spice interaction that they had. I, I literally couldn't stand it. So now everything that I compare it to is just to that. I hated it. This is not that but it's still a little intense. I don't know. I looked it up last night to make sure that she was like a dark romance author. Like I've already looked it up before, but I just wanted to double check, I guess. And I, to my understanding, it seems like dark romance is more talking about taboo topics and less about how much smut and stuff is in the book. At least that's what it explained it as. I don't know. <sighs> this one's just really odd. I'm just kind of just kind of like going through it. It's not like a good storyline, I guess. I'm not hating it really, but it's just, it's weird. I don't like the family aspect. I don't like the fact that she's into her uncle who's roughly very late thirties to like mid forties maybe. And she's 17. <laughs> That's uncomfortable and gross. Also, like, the two cousins are just, it's, it's weird. It's very odd. I, I don't know. I feel like had I would have known that that's what this was, I definitely would not have picked this one up. But it's not terrible, I guess, thus far. I think that them being, like, off secluded in the woods is kind of fascinating. As of right now, we haven't gotten into, like, they always, they keep talking about how when winter comes, they're snowed in for, like, months. So, I feel like that's going to get pretty interesting whenever we get to that point. Thus far, we have not been anywhere near the winter, but I think at this point we are coming close to it. So, that is definitely making me really nervous. I don't know what's going to happen at all. I hope it's just tame. Hopefully they'll just go sledding or something. I don't know. Um, but I don't think that that's going to happen at all. <laughs> but one can dream. I like that they're just kind of out in the middle of nowhere. I like the seclusion of it. Not necessarily for the like spice aspect of it, but more just for the atmosphere. I think that it's really refreshing. I feel refreshed in the setting, so I do enjoy that. They're far away from town, so I kind of enjoy whenever they get to go into town and stuff like that. But so far, it's just, it's just something. I can say that confidently. It is something. Hopefully it doesn't get that bad. I'm I'm banking on the fact that it's going to get a lot worse. But we'll see. That's kind of the way that they're leading it up. It's like, oh, well, in winter we're all trapped here. We don't get any women around. So I'm, I'm thinking that they're just going to be like a bunch of... I don't know. Like flies prancing on any type of pouncing. Like flies pouncing on any type of food that they can get. I don't know. I feel like that they're just going to... Get a little 
crazy. Hopefully not. So far, it has not been terrible. I don't love the incestual undertones or not even undertones, just tones. <laughs> and I'm not a fan of the spice, but it honestly has not been too aggressive, surprisingly. So I'm going to keep going with this. I guess if anything fascinating, fun, cringy, gross, like, ugh. I want to put this book down, comes up, I'll let you know. Other than that, I'll just keep trucking along and, and let you know what I think. I'm on page 313 now, and we have finally gotten into the winter portion of this book. I talked about this earlier, but the boys that the girl is living with talked about how when winter comes, they get snowed in for like six months so they can't do anything. They can't leave or anything like that and they can't have people in. So she is in this house fully snowed in for six months with three boys. <laughs> uh, honestly, I am just trying to finish this. I don't like this at all. It is just completely weird to me. I don't I don't want to, like, I don't want to read any of the spies at all. I don't, like, I don't even care about where the story's going anymore. There is no storyline, really. It's just that she is stuck in a cabin with three boys. And that's not my favorite storyline ever, <laughs> right? I'm not, like, super digging it or anything like that. It is very intense. I think that the last five chapters I would say have had like a spice scene in it if not every chapter it's like every other chapter that something is happening and I just it's it's a little much for me personally I feel like it's a bit too much um but hey I mean I I'm trying it I'm doing the thing I guess it it just is definitely not something that I am into I'm not interested in this at all I honestly could have DNF this one a little bit ago, but I'm going to stick through it. We're going to keep chugging right along and finish this out and see what I think of it. So far, she's only technically had relations with one of the three people, so I guess we'll see if she hits all three by the time we get done. Gosh, oh, this is so, so terrible. But I'm going to try to finish this, hopefully, by today. And then I will come back and just give you my overall thoughts and opinions. <laughs> Good morning. I haven't the slightest idea what got into me, but I literally just sat down and completely finished Punk 57. I started it last night and got like over halfway through last night and then I woke up this morning like way earlier than Nick did. So I just sat there and cranked through this book on my Kindle and then we got up and sat down and I whipped out the physical copy and I sat there and I read the last like 50 pages or so and just completely finished it. I haven't even like introduced this book to you at all yet and it's already finished. But I'll backtrack because I don't think that I finished talking about Credence yet. This book honestly was such a roller coaster of crap. I feel like I do not understand how anybody would like this. I feel like if you're into spice and stuff then maybe I could see you being like oh yeah this is kind of hot but like it, that's just so not me. That's so not my thing. Not my cup of tea at all. I just... This book was so ridiculous on so many different levels. I cannot 
process what I read with this. I have no real words or emotions or thoughts. It just was gross. I don't understand. This was so gross. So for anybody that like talks about the ugly love, I think it is by Colleen Hoover, where there's the step siblings that are into each other. If you can't handle that, do not read this book. Don't, don't do it because that's quite literally all that this is. This is all just a big incestual love square. Literally, she's into her, her step uncle, she's into her step cousin and her other step cousin. And they're all just doing the thing. And, oh my gosh, I, 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 I'm doing this. I can't even process this. I, I did not like this at all. There was no, <laughs> there was no story in this. This was not a story. This was just erotica. That's all this was. Sorry, but that's that's just it. There was no interesting plots. I feel like there was nothing that was just screaming like, oh, this is actually a story. It, it, oh my gosh. I literally just, I don't know. I, I just don't know. I don't know what to say about this. This was just something on a whole entirely different playing field that I'm, than I am used to. I, like, I'm just, I'm shocked. I'm shook to my core. I cannot believe I read this. Truly, I can't believe that I read this. And more importantly, I can't believe that I finished it. I think I said this earlier, if it were not for this video and I was just reading this on my own, I probably would have DNF this one by the time they hit the winter season. I think like it was about halfway through the book before it actually started getting like really intense. It was a little bit more intense before you got that far into it. And already at that point, I was like, ooh, I'm not really into the way that this is headed. But then they start getting like too much and I'm like, wow, that's, <laughs> that's something, that is something there. Wow. I feel just weird just holding this. This is so not my, not my cup of tea, but I finished it. Um, I did not like it. I didn't like it. But I will say the book, like just holding it and stuff right now, it's so comfortable. Like it just feels like a nice book. If I had another book that felt like this, I just, I would enjoy reading it. And I enjoyed physically holding this book. It just is so nice and the, the spine is so like bendy and stuff. But the contents of this book, man, just totally rubbed me the wrong way. Ugh. But like I mentioned before, I also read Punk 57. I literally got 50% of the way through this last night and then I woke up this morning and, and just completely finished it. So there was not any time for me to sit here and talk to you about it. Like I finished it in less than a 24 hour period. Sorry, I didn't introduce you to this at all. Haven't really like spoken on this at all, but this one was more of a typical romance than this one was. This one was just gross, <laughs> right? We're, we're all on the same page. This one is more like this random couple teenagers that kind of made sense for them to be together. There wasn't like anything gross. It was a little bit spicy and there were also some like triggering characters in this. A lot of the friends of the main character, the girl main character, they were like bullies. They were all kind of bullies. And then some of them also were like little, I don't even know, little womanizers. They were just terrible. They just... Oh my gosh, it's so, oh, oh my goodness. This, just, yeah, that. So I didn't love the characters in this book. I didn't care for like the female main character really. Cause she just wasn't that great of a person. I feel like she did kind of come around towards the end. This is probably swollen, but I don't know. She came around and kind of figured out what she was doing wrong and could kind of turn away from that and just kind of right her wrongs and stuff. But, she, man. This one was not as bad as this one, but I still, I'm just not a spice gal, obviously. I'm just not, so I didn't like this one either. I didn't really care for it. I think the storyline was a little bit better. This one had some plot twists where I was kind of like, okay, you know, that's not terrible. But again, just borderlining the characters, acting the way that they were, the like themes that were in this book just were gross, the way that the boys in some of these stories were treating the girls were just terrible and I, ugh. 
And then on top of that, then, like, the other characters, they had all their, like, spicy stuff. And I was just like, I don't really care. I'm just kind of skimming through it, whatever. So the storyline as a whole was a lot more interesting, in my opinion. But it's still just... It wasn't great. It literally wasn't, like, something... This is not something that you read for the storyline. It's just not, right? You don't pick up these books and are like, oh my gosh, like, I heard that these stories are really fantastic. Like, they're really just earth shattering. They're really going to open your eyes and you're going to, I don't know, understand the world in a new way. Like, it's just, that's just not what it is. This is just for the spice. That's what these are. These are just spice and that's it. That's all. So to me, I don't love reading them because I don't like that. But again, this one was... This one was better. <laughs> but still not something that I would ever recommend to literally anybody. So now, moving on to our last book for this video, I have Birthday Girl here. I, I'm i scared going into this one. I don't know anything about this. Again, I'm not expecting great things after the past two. I'm a little nervous and very uncomfortable already. So now I'm just kind of going in this like, oh, I'm gonna hate this and this is gonna be awful. And I'm just gonna try to get through it as best as I can. But we'll see. Maybe this one will be a lot better and this one will be a lot more tame. Some people that I follow on Goodreads have given these all very low ratings. So I don't feel as bad for not liking them. I feel like I'm a little bit more justified now in saying what I'm saying. But, you know, at the end of the day, these are just my opinions, right? If you read these and you love them, then good for you. Now we are on to Birthday Girl. And I'll actually read the back of this one because I forgot to do it for Punk 57. But this one says, Jordan and her boyfriend have nowhere else to go when her boyfriend's dad, Pike, offers to let them move in with him. Working a dead-end job with her relationship on the rocks, she reluctantly accepts, expecting to help out around the house in exchange. What she doesn't anticipate is for her heart to race every time Pike pulls into the driveway or her cheeks to burn when their eyes meet over the kitchen table. He's kind, listen to her, and protects her in a way that no man ever has before. Her sisters once told her that there are no good men, and if you find one, he's probably unavailable. Only Pike isn't the unavailable one. She is. As the days go by, Pike is finding it anything but simple to have his son's girlfriend living in his house. Oh. <laughs> Cute. He can't stop thinking about her and holding his breath every time they cross paths. It feels like she's becoming a part of him, except he knows they're not free to give in to this. How could they when he's her boyfriend's father? Okay. Oh, look, Miss Colleen Hoover says as gripping as it was sexy. So, if Miss Colleen Hoover is finding this sexy, then I know for a fact that I'm not going to like it that much. I'm not a big Colleen Hoover stand, so I'm not expecting to care for this one that much now. I, that makes me wonder. I wonder if anybody said anything about these ones. These are more self-published, I feel like. I don't think that these had like a publisher, if I'm not mistaken, because I think that one is the first one that I got that actually does, because these don't have like anything at the bottom or anything like that, but this one, I think it says Berkeley. That one has something. So I don't know, we'll see. This one's a little bit more of a floppy book. So I feel like this one's definitely gonna be a lot more comfortable to hold. This is literally all I can talk about is holding the book because everything else is just so bad. This one's probably gonna be a lot more comfortable to hold than this one. This one was so stiff. I like, I mean, come on. Come on, I read most of this on my Kindle again. So I just picked up the last, I read the first three chapters and probably the last 50 pages or something on the actual book and the rest I read on my Kindle. And I'm not mad because this one was difficult to hold. But this one's so nice. And this one's just nice and floppy. So I'm excited to hold this one and get to it. I'm also excited to just go ahead and finish these because I'm... Ugh, I'm so appalled by what I'm reading right now. I, I feel gross. I really do. So. Ugh. Anyways, I'm going to start on this one. Probably not anytime soon right now. It's house cleaning day. Finish the house cleaning. I'll start on this at some point. And if I have time, I'll update you, let you know what I'm thinking of it. And if not, then I'll just update you at the end. 
There's probably not going to be a lot to say. I'm sure you can just guess my opinions on it off the get. Mm -hmm. Pike, come on, just find a lady that's, like, old enough for you. Oh, your, your son's girlfriend? Really? Ugh. I'll let you know. I've definitely not got very far through this book. I am on page one of nine. Um, I really don't have much to say. I don't know if I'm just not, like retaining much of what's going on or what the deal is but so far the main girl ends up moving in with her boyfriend's dad so they're all living together i don't necessarily know why i think that they explained it but if i'm recalling this correctly i think there was an issue with the boyfriend and their apartment complex like they wanted him to be kicked out and I think she ended up just going with him or something like that because the damages that he caused were too much for her to pay to fix or something like that. So the dad offers to allow them to come move in with him so that they can save money and save up for a new place. But the guy does not like his dad because he grew up with his mom and his mom is kind of like, in the dad's words, the mom is like a liar and stuff and she just is kind of manipulative and wants everybody to believe what she says even if that's not necessarily the truth so i don't really know what's going on with that all i know is that's just what he said i don't know anything about like the mom side of things really yeah i'm not very far in i do i would like to finish this today and i'm not saying that i can't nick's gonna be gone all day so i definitely am gonna have all the time in the world today he's not coming back until tomorrow morning so i have all the time in the world to finish this my goal would be to finish this today whether or not that happens i don't know obviously i can read some tonight but i am gonna try to get a good chunk of this finished right now because i want to be done with it i want to move on i want to read other books i want to be done with this video <sighs> this is something else this is really just not not my cup of tea. I'm not enjoying this so far. I guess we'll see what happens with this one. Hopefully this one's better than the other ones. I could see this one being a little bit more of like a slow burn type thing, but I don't know. I guess we'll see. It's probably not going to be because, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of her boyfriend. I really haven't like seen much of, of him at all in the book, but this little scene with her being upset at him for like not doing the chores and like she has to pick up on the slack and he's like, yeah, well, I didn't ask you to do that. And she's like, well, you know, you're only doing that. So like, I will do it for you. It's not like that you're gonna actually do it. You're just leaving it for me to do. And he's like, well, why don't you just like, why don't you just, you know, we can go bang and just be quiet for a little while. And she's like, but like that solves literally nothing. Nothing gets fixed. <laughs> and then he just keeps trying. And she's like, no, I'm not like, I'm not into it. Like, yeah, I'd be, I'd be irritated too. If you're already irritated at somebody, like that's not, I don't know. I, not a fan of him. I'm not saying that I think that she needs to get with his dad though, because of it. But I mean, he's seeming like a better option. <laughs> Never did I ever think that I would think that. <laughs>
I think it's time to finally say my piece. So I just finished Birthday Girl. I think I finished this yesterday. <sighs> wow, <laughs> this is really something. These were all really something. I, I would say out of the three, I think that this one was probably my favorite if I had to choose. I still didn't love the like topic behind this. I don't think that I'm really into girl falls in love with her boyfriend's dad. I think that that's a very weird thing. Obviously, I'm sure that this happens in real life in some slight scenarios and in some slight instances, um, but this is not something that I have ever thought about, I guess. So like for me, this is such a new and obscure topic. I just thought it was really creepy. And was not the biggest fan. On top of the dad being in love with this girl, he was like also parenting her. And I just found that so creepy that like, not only was he like inserting himself into being a father figure like in her life, he was also like, well, I'm really into her, I'm in love with her, like whatever. And it just was, it, it was a very unsettling relationship <laughs> in, my, in my opinion. I didn't care for it that much. This one, I feel like maybe had more plot than the rest of them. I, I really don't know. I don't remember <laughs> that much. I don't, I, I kind of just am blocking all of these out of my brain because these are too much for me. I think that, you know, her trying to build a life outside of her parents and stuff like that is, is more meaningful than just them banging on the counter, whatever. But it still wasn't like there was anything going on other than them falling in love and banging. You know, that's kind of like the theme with all these. There's nothing really like, there's no like storyline or anything like that. So to me, they're just not great. I don't care. I'm not like a massive romance person in general. I do enjoy like the story and I'm, I'm more of a slow burn type of gal. So I enjoy them like falling for each other and giving themselves time to really figure out what they enjoy about each other and like actually come to terms with them wanting to be with each other and this was just like oh you know we can't do it because I'm too old and she's too young and she's the same age as my son and and whatever but like I'm kind of just gonna go for it anyways and then they like pull back from each other and like oh we already did this but we, like it can't keep going on that was kind of like the theme with all of these and it, oh my gosh but I mean it can't get worse than banging your step uncle and your step cousins though can it really I don't know <laughs> I really don't know and I don't want to find out but I did finish this one thank the lord I think this one was probably my favorite out of all of them this one had the, the most substance in my brain if I had to pick between them all but <laughs> you know so these were my three dark romances that I ended up reading for this week. It took me a little bit longer than a week. I ended up like not feeling great for a couple days. So I just didn't want to read a ton for those days. But I did for the most part finish these up relatively quickly, which I thought it was going to take a lot longer to get through them than I actually did, which is surprising. So first off, I read Credence. This one involved a girl whose parents died. They committed suicide together or something like that, something along those lines. But she ends up going to live with her step uncle and step cousins and she ends up falling for all of them. was not a fan did not care for this one this one was like traumatic reading I, I I don't I don't even know how I like got through it to be honest and if it were up to me I definitely would have DNF'd it <sighs> but that was not the point of this video then I read punk 57 I this one was definitely a lot less spicy I feel like than this one we got to the point with this one where there was literally a spicy in every chapter and I was just not there for it I just was like get me out of here <laughs> I don't want to read this anymore but this one I don't think was as spicy. It still was kind of spicy. And also these kids were in like high school, I think. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that these were high schoolers. To me, that's just kind of weird. Um, You know, maybe like make them 18 or something at least. Like I, I'm not trying to read about like 17 year olds. Maybe they weren't 17. I could be totally wrong. The girl in this book was 17. I'll tell you that. She was 17. <laughs> With their uncle. This, I think they were just high schoolers. I don't, I don't. Look, 
this had some plot, I guess. Not that I even remember what it was. I just know that even though this book as a whole was better than this one, I did not like this at all. Like, it just was so weird. I didn't care for it. I didn't care about any plot that it did have. It just fell really flat for me. Again, I don't like the spice in it at all, so that made it even worse. But just setting the spice aside, I didn't like this book even a little bit. <laughs> so setting the spice aside with this one, I it was okay. I did like the atmosphere that we were in. I liked the setting kind of, but this just was, it just was weird. It, I don't even know. Then lastly, of course, birthday girl. Like I just said, I finished this one, this one girl has a boyfriend. The boyfriend is like not a good boyfriend at all. He gets them evicted out of their apartment and then they end up going to live with his dad. He he allows them to live with him rent free. They just have to kind of help with the chores, help with dishes, cooking, stuff like that. And she decides to fall for his dad. That's about it. <laughs> There's not much plot other than that. I would say order wise of what I liked and didn't like the most and I'm kind of just gonna put the spice aside because the spice was just again I didn't like it in any of these but I think just as a whole I hated this I did not enjoy an ounce of this I really didn't so this one's probably my least favorite and just ever so slightly above that one would probably be Credence because like I said, I enjoyed the setting, the atmosphere. I enjoyed being on the mountain in the snow away from society and stuff like that. That was exciting. I enjoyed that aspect of it and that was probably it. And the book was nice. I've said this a million times. It just is, it just, it, it's a good feeling book. I do like that. And then probably my favorite of the three, not by much though, probably birthday girl. So I, I, I'm honestly surprised that I got through these. I, I don't know what I was expecting. I think I mentioned this earlier, but I did look up like what dark romance was and it said more just talking about like taboo topics, like topics that people don't mention a lot that are more like obscure, that are kind of like your eh, that's a little bit too risque type of thing. It's not necessarily just about the amount of spice that's in the book, but it kind of goes hand in hand, I feel like. Um, so yeah, these were, <laughs> these were something. These were definitely, uh, these were definitely of the taboo topic. Maybe least taboo would be this one just cause it was kind of like run of the mill, I guess, in a way. I don't know. They all had like terrible, terrible um what's the word if you are like triggered by any like triggering material like stuff like that of just i don't know that just felt like very grooming very like assault very predatorial like men were in these books and i just ooh, <laughs> ooh my goodness i can't believe that i managed but i did and i finished these Thankfully, they're done. So I can probably say I will not be picking up another Penelope Douglas book in my life. I think that these three were enough. Uh, I, I think that maybe she only has like one more standalone. I think I was looking and I don't care to read it. I don't care to read any of the series. This is just probably not an author that I'm thinking is for me and I'm okay with that. I don't mind not being into her writing. One more thing to mention while I'm thinking about it, you know, whenever you read books by the same author, especially back to back, and you kind of pick up on little things where you're like, okay, like this is definitely the same author, right? Like I can tell that the same author wrote these. I had that with Rebecca Yaros whenever I read the military romance books. I kind of found a bunch of similarities between the books where she would say things that kind of just were repetitive between from book to book. And it was a lot more noticeable reading a back to back, obviously, which is what I did. But same thing with these, but less obnoxious. She talked about sleep shorts. Every single one of these, the girls were always wearing sleep shorts. All of them. I guess that's like a thing. If, you, if you're trying to get a man, just get yourself in some sleep shorts because that's going to be what makes him fall for you, apparently. Every single one of these girls is just always nonstop talking about their sleep shorts. Dude's always talking about her sleep shorts. And I was like... Maybe she could wear some like leggings to bed. Maybe she could wear some just pajama pants, sleep shorts. I've never owned sleep shorts. 
I feel like I'm not, <laughs> I feel like at this point, every woman in the world now wears sleep shorts and I'm just like the only one that doesn't. So that was the only thing that I noticed. Other than that, they were all definitely very unique books. They weren't like the same really at all. I didn't like necessarily think like, oh yeah, like these, other than the fact that they were spicy, I didn't sit there and think like, oh yeah, like I can tell that these are the same author other than the sleep short thing. So that's, that's my only like thing that I have to mention that wasn't just about how ridiculously spicy and ridiculous these books were. But yeah, these are the three that I read. I've officially broken the barrier of me getting into dark romance. Um, now I'm officially reclosing the barrier, locking the, locking the gate, like never going back to it probably. Like I'm not a fan, not into it unfortunately for me. Oh well, what am I gonna do? But that's it. These are all that I read. Let me know if you've read any of these. Let me know what your thoughts were on them. Let me know if you enjoyed them, if you didn't, if you DNF'd any of them. Just if you agree with me, disagree, literally the whole nine. I'm, I'm curious now. I'm about to go read a whole bunch of reviews on these because now I'm curious. I want to know what other people have to say because I'm kind of disgusted. <laughs> But thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. And I hopefully we'll get to see you in the next one. See ya. Mm -hmm.